Morning, morning. Um, welcome back to another video on Watercraft Fishing TV. Today, me and Sam are down in Cornwall. We've had a last minute opportunity to head out on the boat with John Locker and Chris to have a go at some sharks down here in Falmouth. The boat is somewhere over there. The car is behind me there. We, uh, like I said, it's quite a last minute opportunity. So we woke up this morning at half past two. Same it is, <laughs> Sam's still not awake. Um, <laughs> half past two and I've driven all the way down to Falmouth. Um, it is now just before seven o'clock in the morning. We're about to jump on the boat and go and have a go at some sharks. Both me and Sam have never caught a decent shark. I've had some taupe in my time, but never a blue shark, never even seen a blue shark or a porgy in real life. Super excited. No doubt we'll see quite a lot of amazing wildlife out there. Um, so come with us and let's go see what we can find. I'll speak to you in a bit. And just like that, we were out on Anglo Dawn for our first ever day shark fishing. And to say that we were pumped would be an understatement. We were so excited. And to hear that Andy had a tuna license as well, meant that when we saw these hundreds of birds, hundreds of dolphins, and even a couple of minky whales, we thought we may just get a bonus tuna as well, which would have just been amazing. Unfortunately, as much as John and Chris tried to catch them on the top, there were no tuna underneath those bait fish. So we turned our attention back to blue shark fishing, stormed out to the grounds, and before you knew it, we were there, and it was time to hear how to fish for these sharks from John. The fishing that we do in the UK for sharks, 99% of it is catch and release. So generally, we promote the use of circle hooks. And I'm just gonna crush the barbers down on these. And it just makes it easier. You'll see when we get a shark, it makes it so much easier for unhooking. It's quite difficult to buy circles in this size that are barbless. But the easiest thing to do is you just get a pair of pliers just flatten the barb down like that. Using a trace of wire, that's just to protect it from the shark's teeth. The wire that we're using is um, 40 nanostrand wire and it comes in two parts. You have a hook length and you have a trace body. When fishing for blue sharks, the reason why you need a long trace body is because they are known for, they roll up, they wrap up in the trace and their skin is just like sandpaper. So after a while of wrapping up and wrapping up, it's not unusual for them to get 20 feet of line wrapped around them. So that's why you need a good 10, 12 feet of wire. On the business end, I like using Muppets. A Muppet on both ends of the rod. And yeah, once we get a bait set up, I'll show you how to feed the boats on. But most of the rods that we're gonna be using today are gonna to be some variation of a fixed ball rod and reel. We'll talk you through them as well. But generally something with Oh, nice. Something around about five, six, seven thousand size spinning reels work perfectly. With the rods now all rigged up and ready to go, it was time to think about creating a chum slick and a bit of a general scent trail to bring these sharks in, as well as catching some fresh hook baits. Right, so I'm going to catch white in, basically just set a mackerel feathers, bait the bottom two, we'll drop this down and uh, hopefully get some. White probably the best bait for blue sharks. It's quite visual, it's quite bright, it's better than a mackerel um, when they get feeding, especially when there's a bit of movement, the sharks will notice it. So yeah, I'll um, drop down and bring you back when I've got one. Finally hooked something, taking a while, it's a bit slow out here today on the bottom, but hopefully white enough scared. Pouting, but yeah, that'll do. That'll be a Flap that off, that'd be a bait. We carried on fishing for bait for probably 20 minutes or so, as you can see John getting stuck into some nice scad there, as well as catching a really pretty little red gurnard. But to be honest, from here on out, it was watching those floats keen-eyed, waiting for that first one to bomb under. Right, first, uh, first shark of the day. That's pretty cool. It's taken about 45 minutes of building up the slick. John was just saying as well, bringing up some scad from the bottom, might have just picked them up off the bottom and brought them into the slick. Oh my God. 
<laughs> yeah. One thing that's really important about this blue shark yeah. fishing is the importance of the shark's welfare when coming up to the side of the boat. boat as amazing as these animals are, it's really important just to get them tagged and released as quickly as possible and just enjoy seeing them in that brief moment. Right, so that's the first fish to the boat. One of the things that the guys on Anglo Dawn are doing is tagging every single shark that hasn't already been tagged, keeping the data um, for scientific purposes. So that is the first time that I've ever put my name to one of these tags, really excited to do so. Um, obviously blue shark on the top and they're gonna fill in the rest of this form, but what a way to start the trip. Now it's just time to get Sam one and then hopefully bigger and bigger and bigger. Ridiculous. <laughs> Adam's just had a 45 pound-ish blue shark and now it's my turn and the anticipation is definitely building. We're just sat watching the floats, eagerly eyed. And I, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling it in my heart, to be honest. We're watching the floats at the moment, just bobbing around. There's one that's clear and kind of half filled with water that keeps kind of sinking down in between the swell. And every time it goes down, my heart starts pounding. Um, yeah, fingers crossed I get my turn, but that fish was incredible. <laughs> I'm hooked up into my first blue shark. <laughs> oh my God. Feel, mate? Pretty ridiculous to be honest, that first run was absolutely outrageous. <laughs> it's just like nothing I've ever felt before. Oh my God. I should not have been wasting my energy winding up little power, I'll tell you that. Blue shark number two. This one estimated at around 65 pounds, quickly tagged and then very quickly released straight afterwards. Just an amazing memory. There we are, it's official. <laughs> felt a little bit better it went very deep to start off with a couple of amazing runs and now uh, she's slowly starting to come towards the boat I think that's the float she's not slowly trying to do anything at the moment Whew. they are powerful powerful animals not sure how big this one is, but like I said, it's a couple of fantastic runs. This is just unbelievable. I don't think she's that big, she's just spirited. So this is when the day really picked up. Uh, it was pretty much constant action throughout the rest of the day. As you can see here, Adam getting stuck into one shark and then stuck into another one straight after that. Both of these fish were estimated at around 25 to 30 pounds, so smaller fish, but I mean, just absolutely immaculate as you can see. And then it wasn't long before John was also into his first shark of the day. And this one gave him the right run around. And this was a proper beast coming in at over a hundred pounds. So now it's just time for us to catch one. Be a big one now, watch. Make sure you got that drag not too far locked in. There she is. Shark. Nail. Well done, Thank you, mate. Awesome. The next couple of hours were just awesome fun with everybody getting involved in the action, everybody catching some sharks, and just generally having an awesome rest of the afternoon on the water.
And just before packing up at the end of the day, both myself and John found ourselves into a double hookup situation with two sharks. And John was saying that often when one blue shark sees another blue shark take a bait, it can actually induce a strike. And that's exactly what happened. My rod went and then about three seconds later, John's rod peeled off as well. So a very cool end to the day before heading home. Right, that's it, we are back in. You can see we are in the marina, sat by the car, about to move on to our next destination. We're off to Sulcombe for a few days of filming. We might be able to grab some fishing in there, but there certainly won't be any shark fishing like today. That was great fun, wasn't it? That was an amazing experience. So, it's so ridiculous good. Ridiculous compared to what we normally do. Well, we <laughs> went from having not caught a shark to now between us, we've caught 15. So that's good. We've, Sam's had the biggest one today, which was 100 pounds there or thereabouts um obviously we didn't weigh anything but it was a big old fish and um, we've had a few 50s 60 and then a few kind of below 40 it was a really really fun day um thanks so much to andy from anglo dawn also john and chris obviously from coming out and talking us through exactly how to land these fish it really was a very very good day probably a bit of a downer that we didn't get to go and chase some tuna it was it was a bit of a downer but i think you know we we'll now we now know Andy Anglo Dawn and we now we'll have to come back. We'll have to come back. It's just we the way it is. There was there. there was I mean wildlife wise it was just unbelievable out there. We saw minke whales, dolphins. Um, <laughs> we didn't actually like... see any tuna, but no. obviously we saw sharks. It was a crazy crazy day. Um, just a wonderful day out in Cornwall, having an amazing time and seeing some amazing fish. And uh, like I said, now we need to jump in the car, head towards our hotel in Devon, and pass out instantly when we get there i yeah. think maybe one or two beers and then straight to bed but um what an amazing session like i said thanks to the guys um it was a really really brilliant day we can't wait to come back um i hope you've enjoyed that video and uh, we will speak to you guys very very soon speak to you soon we will be finding a shark <laughs> just not right now no <laughs> back to the monster man <laughs>